Hi guys, it's Michael, G0POT here. I wanted to activate some summits in the Brecon Beacons. It's quite a trip for me, so I opted to work two in one visit, Penavan and Van Voor. They're less than five kilometres apart as the crow flies, situated either side of the A470. I started with Penavan, parking at Pontar Dav. There's a small side road that acts as a car park, nicely provisioned with toilets and several food vans. This should have warned me about the summit's popularity. The start of the trail is obvious, beautiful and well made up. <sighs> oh, I'm on for it. Okay, I'm back. 20 minutes into the climb. It's actually not too bad. Path is very well made up, good wide. Well maintained, uh, quite busy. Uh, lots of people here. When I parked earlier, the car park was full. Uh, so, a uh, popular spot, and you know, I have to try and find some room at the summit. Uh, in front of me is, I think, not the summit I'm climbing. Uh, I think that's corn do uh, in front of me. Penny fan is tucked behind that and it crop to the right. Again, apologies for my fantastic Welsh pronunciation. Whew, right, not far from the bridge, I don't think, but uh, let's keep going. So this is from my 15, 20 minutes, 20 minutes up position. Starting to get some height now, getting closer to our target, or at least the the ridge. Right onwards and upwards. <sighs> okay, just past the crossroads for Kondu and Penny Fan. Uh, so they've taken the turning to the well, to the right of the two to head across to that second ridge. There's the first one, there's the second one, which is hopefully Penny Fan. Whew. I am about, uh, what's that, 25, 35, 40 minutes into the walk. Ah, beautiful views up here, starting with Penny Fan there. Okay, we've had a fairly successful uh, activation of the summit. This is definitely not a quiet summit. There's a lot of people up here. Uh, when I arrived, there's only a couple managed to set up um, way off the, the, the peak. Um, it's quite a big flat peak up here, but uh, uh, the actual summit's become inundated with people. Lots of kids running around. Um, so I was keen to get my antenna down in the end. They're not paying any attention at all. So it's my, my duty not to uh, uh, put any risk in their way. They, they don't need that. Um, and also noisy. <laughs> I've had to put my headphones on. Literally can't hear over the top of people screaming at each other up here. Terrible. Um, not the nice picturesque quiet, um, well picturesque yes, but not the kind of quiet summit you normally want to um, to operate from. So I've packed up. I'm going to uh, head back down now. Nice activation though. Really nice little summit. Great views from up here. But yeah, very, very busy. I do feel as a social operator, it's kind of part of our remit to um, adhere by the uh, old adage of take any photographs, leave any footprints, and don't leave footprints if you can, and take any video if you're me. But uh, I know sometimes people drop an odd tissue or a little bottle top or something out of their pocket when they're walking. I don't realise it, so I like to pick up uh, the rubbish uh, that I do find. Normally just put a couple of things in my pocket. But uh, literally I'd need a 
a bin bag, I think, for, for a pair of hundreds of plastic bottles and sandwich packets and crisp packets and God knows what else. Um, yeah, shame. People not really uh, looking after the environment, but uh, there you go. <laughs> it's a lot of people. Uh, I arrived here on a Sunday at about 8.30. I uh, walked up from about 8.45. Takes about an hour to climb, 50 minutes to climb, and it was quite quiet. Only a couple of people at the top when I got there. Um, but uh, yes, as I'm coming down now, there are hundreds of people climbing, so it's a very popular spot. So um, yeah, you do need to uh, be aware of that if you're going to come here and operate. Right, final little bit back to the car park and then on to the next summit. When I returned to the car park, I found visitors were using the verges of the main road to park in both directions, as far as the eye could see. I opted to drive up the road about 600 metres for the start of the trail to Van Voor. I think this is the Story Arms Centre. I assume it's some sort of adventure centre. So I've just pulled in on the side of the road, as this car is to do, um, and just parked on the side of the road because uh, there's a little uh, proper car park, like a lay-by car park, opposite that building on the left. Um, and that's the proper car park, but uh, it's completely full. So just pulled up on the side of the road, plenty of, plenty of space, everyone's doing it. And uh, now I've just got to find the bottom of the path to lead up to Fan 4. The start of the trail is obvious, but note I struggled to see a clear path and took a less than optimal route on the way up to the summit. So if you uh, <laughs> try parking here to go up Fan 4 and think, my God, that is Nick Good. Don't panic, uh, people park all the way along here and actually they're crossing the road and they're going up that path the other side of the road which is uh, another route up to Penny Fan. Meanwhile I'm heading in this direction, not a distinct path on this side so far and I think I'm heading up there. The ground at the bottom of this hill is a little bit boggy but not terrible but it is the height of summer so it could possibly get much boggier in the winter. It's fairly easy to uh, avoid the really wet bit. As I've walked a couple of minutes up from the car park uh, you immediately see a trail branching to the right of where the summit would be. So uh, I'm heading a little off piste but I'm going to follow this trail and see if it takes me roughly in the right direction uh, and then I'll probably have to cut a left somewhere and uh, make my way up to the summit. Okay, I'm, I'm literally just a couple of minutes in and I can see that this path that I'm on follows a track all the way along the side of this little range here. So it's not where I want to be. I can't see anything turning up the hill at the moment. There's possibly something over there in the distance, but as that's where I want to be, I think I'm just gonna branch off to the left here and see if I can make a, a track up through. Well, the marshy conditions at the bottom of this summit are explained somewhat by the little waterfall coming down from the summit. <laughs> oh yeah, man, that's cold. Oh, that is chilly, but very refreshing. <laughs> okay, so I've just come from the bottom of the waterfall, I went up the right hand side and I've just zigzagged up. It's very steep but not undoable. Certainly in the dry or if you have snow I think it'll be fine. Maybe a bit tougher if it's wet and slidey. But I've just come over the top of what I thought <laughs> might laughably be the, uh, the summit and uh, I need to see that behind me. <laughs> Quite some way away. Looks closer in the camera. It's pretty, that's, that's got to be a kilometre or so away, I think, from here. <sighs> got a bit more of a walk yet. Ah, sheep and horses up here. There's a mixture of long and short grass, and the long grass basically indicates where all the boggy bits are. So, uh, challenge is going to be keeping to the dry bits. I can see another climber making his way along that ridge line might be a good idea, probably a gentler ascent. I'm going to go in in the middle of the shot and probably bare left, make my way up to the ridge 
in a more gentle fashion and then follow that ridge up to the top. Now as I got to the northeast face of uh, Fan Four, um, I noticed rather than heading up to the left and then picking up the main ridge line that I'd seen, I noticed there was a distinct path cutting across upwards and to the right towards the west. Um, and when I looked at the geography of the hill, actually it looks less steep from the western side. So I'm taking this diagonal path upwards and to the west. Uh, so up and to the right as I look at it, um, uh, to try and bear around to the west side of the hill. And, uh, and then we'll try and cut up to the top from, from there. Hopefully it's not quite as steep. Um, hard work, harder than uh, Penny Fan, I think. Um, but, uh, but, you know, but a lot quieter. <laughs> it's probably a good thing. Uh, it's not so many people here. I saw one person making their way up to the summit a long way off, but uh, uh, picked a good day for this. I specifically picked a day where it's clear um, and dry, but not too sunny. So there's high cloud, a little bit of haze, uh, but uh, you still get great views, but there's a little bit of high cloud just to keep the worst of the sun off. And obviously, big sun hat uh, just to keep the rest off. So um, it's bright and dry, but uh, not too hot. Uh, fantastic views. Uh, just looking down through the valley here and then casting across to the right, that is Kondu, which is right up next to Penny Fan. Anyway, can take a quick break and then head on up to the summit. Well, this is a little bit more like it. I'm up the summit of uh, Fan 4. Um, that was a tough climb actually, it was quite hard, I'm sweating a bit, um, but it's empty up here. I saw a couple of people walking up ahead of me, um, but they've obviously been to the summit and walked on. I can see a, another summit to the south of me here, so I think it's probably a bit of a trail that people do. Uh, just got set up, I don't know whether you can see the um, antenna here behind me. Um, I've got my NFED half wave uh, with me today, so uh, operating on 40 and 30. Um, I have a little listen on 20 now just to see if I hear anything uh, as well. Um, and my uh, SOTA travel pole, um, which, uh, there we go, hopefully just got that in the shot, um, which is doing lovely today. Ah, oh, fantastic, beautiful views from up here, a little bit hazy, but, um, and the, the the summit is quite flat, so um, you, you can't kind of stand on the top and, and get a 360 quite as quite as easily. Um, it's surprisingly wet up here. Thankfully, I brought something to sit on, but the, the whole top of the hill is saturated um, with some stinky pools as well. And uh, I've been badgered by flies the, from the second I got up here. <laughs> Although they've finally gone away, I think. They've been following me around, probably while I was still sweating. Mmm, nice. Um, but now they've uh, they've buggered off, thank God. So um, right, I'm just getting set up, and I'm going to give a, a CQ call on 40, I think, to get started with, and uh, see if I can work anyone. I just thought before I packed up, I'd just look over the, the setup that I had today. So I've been using the Sota Beams travel pole. So that's a 10 meter pole. Packs down nice and small, as you can see. That's probably about half a meter long. So that will go in the backpack. I've got my um, half wave NFED. So that's three bands. I'm using the Sota Pico traps in that as well. Um, so that's uh, nice and lightweight and small. And the very small um, and lightweight impedance matcher. Extra piece of cord for um, a third guy, so I use the antenna. There's two of the legs of um, uh, of the guying system, and then a piece of string for the other. So basically, I'm not carrying separate guying and an antenna. I use the antenna as part of my guying system. And today, I've been using the uh, mountain topper, the LNR MTR 3B, the three-band uh, mountain topper with my little Pico paddle from uh, Palm Paddles on the side there, fantastic. 
tiny little battery 460 I think that is milliamp um, hour battery so weighs absolutely nothing and a pair of headphones um, or a little speaker I like to plug the speaker in if I can because it means that people who are coming and visiting um, can hear it and it draws them over to come and ask about it so when I was up on um, Penny Fan earlier um, I, I had uh, quite a lot of people come and actually ask me what I was doing. They see the fishing rod antenna, uh, the fishing rod mast, and, and think you're a bit crazy. Um, but they hear the CW and that draws them in, so it's a great opportunity to talk about radio. So before I finish, I might um, have a, a little go on two meters. I've got a little um, Soda Beam's uh, multi purpose two meter antenna there to plug into the handheld, so I might fire that up in a minute and just uh, give a quick call on that before packing up. So you'll notice that I'm a little bit more dressed up than I was earlier. Um, got a buff to keep my head warm and I put a shirt on now. And uh, it's a beautiful day and it's actually not that windy. Um, and you would think that uh, you'd, you'd be lovely and hot. And, and believe me, by the time I got up here, I was absolutely baking. Um, but when you're sat, especially when you've been sweating a bit, uh, uh, you know, and you cool down in the, in the breeze, Hardly a breath of wind at the bottom of the hill. You always tend to get a bit of a breeze at the top, um, even though it's actually quite warm. But because you're sat still for you know maybe an hour of operating, um, you do cool down, and it is worth just uh, having a few things just to pop on, um, just to keep you warm, so that you don't cool down during your activation. This time of the year, it's not too bad. If you get into autumn, spring, and, and certainly winter, um, you can get really, really cold. Uh, very quickly without realizing it so it's worth just having a few layers to pop on okay i'm just having a, a little look around from the top for the best route back uh, sometimes it's easier to find a way down than it is to find a way up we can see the tracks more clearly um, the buildings just down there center shot are where i'm parked and i think i'm going to make my way down this um uh this little prominence to the left here and see how steep that is when i get uh, a little further down towards the um, the end. Okay, so uh, coming down, I have found a much better route, um, which I will mark on my associated map for this uh, summit. Uh, coming directly down from the top there, very clear path all the way down, fairly well stepped into the hillside at the top where it's steepest. I think that's probably an easier way up if I'm honest. As you get down here onto the kind of, there's, there's like a plateau before you then drop down to the road. And it's uh, easy to uh, lose track of quite where you're heading, unless you use a compass. But um, actually, you'll notice when you get down on the plateau, you can see paths going up on the hillside opposite. Those are the paths up to um, Penny Van. You can just use that as a reference. The, uh, the leftmost one at centre screen at the moment is um, pretty much opposite the, the little car park. So I'm basically following uh, a very rough path through the uh, grass now. Um, it's not easy to see, but it's basically just slightly worn grass. And I'm using the, uh, the path up the opposite hillside as my target point as to where I'm ultimately trying to head to. So uh, typically climbing a hill and coming down takes about the same amount of time. I always find that weird. But I guess uh, on the way down, you're being careful not to twist an ankle or sprain a knee. Um, so uh, you're not necessarily going much faster than you would be on the way up. But uh, for really steep hills like this is where I find you get that exception. And it took me about an hour and five minutes to go up. And it's taken me about 35 minutes to come down. Now clearly, I found a slightly more efficient route on the way back. Um, but I think it would have still taken me longer on the way up if I'd gone up uh, the, the same way as I've come down. It's just very steep and very slow going on the way up. Uh, on the way down, although it's quite steep, uh, those steps that are kind of cut into the mud make for quite a quick descent. Right, back at the, back at the butty van. Let's uh, go and see what's on offer.